I kind of wish I was doing some comedy because uh, <laughs> it's a pretty serious talk. Um, yeah, let's roll it. Post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, is affecting veterans more than ever. Currently, 20% of all veterans coming back from war suffer from PTSD. And the national average is 22 veterans commit suicide every day. And Montana has the highest rate of three times the national state average. This shows a lack of real and effective help. Um, a call, an urgent call to fix a broken system. The longer we, as a community, take to respond, the more people will be lost. Our brothers and sisters in arms, our parents and our neighbors. Now let's take a, journey, let's take a journey through the eyes of a veteran. You're young and ambitious, looking to make a difference in the world, so the military pops in your head. Heck, why not? Great training, chance to serve, protect the country, travel the world, it's a win-win deal. So you jump head first in the basic training, which pushes you to limits mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. You find a whole new part of yourself, creating a tight bond with the men or women you train with, establishing a new family you never have dreamed of. And out of basic, with a new lease on life, you're ready to take on the world. Then you're deployed into a war zone. Everything's new, exciting, different. It's a strange place, but um, you keep adjusting and changing to meet the needs. What the heck, everyone else is doing it. See, this is where it really happens. There's one horrific moment that happens that changes your whole reality in one fell swoop. It's best quoted by my infantry buddies, uh, my infantry friend says, one minute you're talking with your friend, the next minute you're wiping his guts off yourself. What do you do with that? I have a similar journey as, a vet of, uh, as veterans. I was a military contractor for 10 years. It's me and Turkmenistan. Uh, four years I spent in Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, and other countries. They told me to blend in, but really, look at me. <laughs> no protection, no idea the environment I was going into. That's where my shift happened. I went toe to toe with a Russian mafia hitman. Deep down, I know I wanted to live, so I had to be willing to die at any moment. This is where my innocence died. I'd never met anyone I was so scared of. Literally minutes before, he stomped the guy to death in the bar I was in. After the shift, your faith in humanity dies. The only thing that keeps you going is your crew and your mission. The insanity of violence, hatred, and death becomes your norm, knowing full well that any time you and your close friends can die. And one day, you're all done. You go home. One minute you're in the middle of being shot at and avoiding bombs. The next minute you're walking in your streets of your hometown. This is actually where the real trouble starts. You're expecting and avoiding danger, but there's no signs of danger, so you get paranoid. You keep getting worse and worse and freaking out more and more because you have no team. You have no mission now, and you're not sure what's really happening. You have overwhelming riding um, emotions, pain, nightmares, social stressors, and much more. But you're trained just to keep dealing with it. It's like living with a serial killer coming for you all the time. Around every corner, you can't hide anywhere. Your life becomes a living hell with no visible way out, and the harder you push it away, the worse it gets. But there is a way out. So the three things that I found that help veterans set a foundation of recovery. Mission, team, and faith. Along with a community of therapists and friends, they can build a better life. I wholeheartedly believe that through all trauma, there's the opportunity to grow stronger. See, my challenge is I left corporate because of PTSD, but I didn't know I had it. I didn't know what, what to do or where to go and had absolutely no resources. I know things need to change. So I turned to the one thing that I found joy in was traditional Chinese medicine. When I went into that, my life changed for the better. It has made such an impact on me that I decided to help people suffering from mental and physical trauma. 
with Chinese medicine. See, what veterans have a challenge is, first, they have a stigma of being labeled instead of being supported. They try to navigate a large, cold system that's not very helpful. They get shifted from doctor to doctor with little consistency. Then they get pumped full of pharmaceuticals to just check them out. And this is where integrated medicine comes and fills in the gap. Presently, I'm working on a study to show how integrative medicine plays an important role in recovery of PTSD. I'm working with a university and a team of professors. And then this study um, is going to be the springboard to help more integrated medicine reach our veterans and ultimately the general public. One of the modalities of integrated medicine is shiatsu body work, which deeply heals stored trauma in the body. I like well, how one of my clients, who is a Vietnam veteran, put it. He goes, shiatsu gave me the first sound night's sleep since the war. If you look, <laughs> if you're looking to help veterans out, there's a few things you could do. There's one, just accept them in your community, simply become their friend. You could donate to nonprofits such as local ones like Heroin Horses or Warriors in Quiet Water. And you could also donate to studies and research that are looking to help healthier ways to support our veterans to recover such as the local one that I'm pulling off with integrated medicine helping shiatsu body work. So if you're interested, please contact me, and um, I will be in the lobby. And every donation is tax deductible. Um, and the last slide is actually my contact info and one of my head professors I'm working with out of DC um, who's working to um, create more healthcare, better healthcare system for veterans. So thank you for your time.